I almost forgot. If there's any company out there hiring, this is my CV. Your boy got them papers, yo. Unlike what the title says, today's video is not going to be a measure of intelligence in any way or whatsoever. It's just going to show that the people who go through the system called education do come out victorious. And this is going to be some form of motivation based on my education experience. And I'm going to direct this towards most of the levels that I've been through, that is including primary, junior secondary school, high school, university undergraduate and university postgraduate master's degree because these are the only levels that i've actually been to and in this video i do aim to give a shout out or a mention five youtubers who are also going to share their education experiences in hopes to motivate whoever is watching so if you're watching this video you got this for my foreign friends who don't understand the education system in Zambia. Basically, what they start through is baby class. So baby class usually has three years, which is baby class, middle class, reception. And then you have primary, which has seven years, which is one to seven. And then you write your final exam, which determines whether you proceed into the next level. And then you have junior secondary school, which has two years, which is eight and nine. Then in nine, you write your exam, which is going to determine whether you proceed to the next level, which is senior secondary or high school, which has three years, which is 10, 11, 12. Then you write your final exam, which determines whether you get to have a place in university. Now, that aside, my primary school experience came in a little town called Moflera. And I say a little town because recently they had opened an outlet for Hungry Lion and it made top news. That's how little my town is and i attended a little school called Paxol. it's just around the corner when you're heading towards moflera swimming pool or rugby just on the right turn you see a little school right there it looks like a house Paxol, and it was so small that we were almost the first in practically everything we were the first grade ones we were the first grade twos up to seven when we wrote the first exams that school had ever hosted we were the first class Primary school experience, the only thing that you mainly focus on is just playing, games, and eating. That, that was like my main motivation for going to school in my primary school days. And I never had this urge of, no, nah, I gotta study, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. As long as the teacher taught something, I paid attention, I went through my notes, and I was done. It's like a natural intelligence, if I was so to say. This would also mean, yes, I did top my classes and I never liked anyone surpassing me. So did I come out first in my classes? Yes, most of them. And I say most of them because there were instances when I would be lazy and someone would surpass me in a semester or two. And the worst type of experience that I ever had was someone who beat me by a 0 0.5 mark. Because yet if you're seeing this. Now, because we were so little and we were the first grade seven class my school had ever had we had to register our we had to register for exams in a different school and i've actually forgotten the name if i remember this i'm going to put it somewhere somewhere down here so we had to register it in a, a different school now the thing that you need to pay attention is it doesn't matter how small the school you're coming from is or what reputation the school you were at has as long as you put in effort hard work you can achieve anything you ever want to achieve and this is to say is us writing from a different school were mixed with other students and uh from a school that had more experience and then it had all these teachers that have been teaching exams have been teaching um, exam classes and such like and our teachers were let's say that was the first class they were handling of uh, grade seven students and my teacher went to an extent of saying if any of you was to get above 800, like the best mark for grade sevens is above 800, we would find her dancing on top of the roof. And I told my teacher that I was actually aiming to get 800 and above. And she told me, you're going to find me on top of this roof and I will be dancing. And I'll be like, so be. Now, we wrote our final exams that was in grade seven and I actually scored 
806. Now, 806, did she dance on top of the roof? No. But yeah, they were proud and our names were put down there as the first grade 7 class and yada 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 yada. That was my primary school experience. So, going to junior secondary school. Junior secondary school is kind of different, you know. You're from a place where everything just came natural. All you just had to do is you go through your notes and you'd be topping the class. Junior secondary school was kind of a different feeling because I had attended my junior secondary school at Mofliora, which is MCM, which is Mopani Copper Mine. And this school was um, unique. This is where you'd meet people that are all about, my father has this, my mother has this, these are the type of clothes that I have, this is the type of shoes that I wear, this is, um, they're all about the bling, you know? And if you focus too much on the materials that you have, you tend to lose yourself and the purpose of why you went to school in the first place, you know? And the greatest asset that you can ever have is not what your parents have, but this up here. And if you focus on this up here, all that my father has, my mother has, my brother has, my sisters have, we drive this, this is the type of car we come in in school, it will not affect you in any way. Now, junior secondary school with that in mind was unique. Now, I say unique in a sense of way is because one, I wasn't top in the class like I used to in my primary days. It was different. I met a whole new level. And it was exciting and scary at the same time. Because then I wouldn't live up to the reputation that I preserved in my family saying, I'm the best student. I got this. I'm always coming out number one. And such like and such like. And you know, like if you have the parents that we have then, it's always about... Yeah, number one, my student, my child is number one, my child is number one, my child is number one. And every report card that my parents would come out, they'll be number four, number nine, ten. I think it came out 14th somewhere, somewhere, somewhere there. Now, the funny thing is, in my class there was this kid called Philip. This kid is a genius. So you would have these classes where you'd be seated and teachers would be asking questions. And the funny thing is, teachers will teach you something today and the questions they'll be asking will be from the chapters ahead. And they practically knew everything. I was like, what the hell is wrong with you? And I, I later learned that what he does is he studies ahead. By the time we were in grade 8, he had already finished most of the books that we were supposed to use for that year. And he was already reading grade 9 books. And I'm like, but that's, that's smart. You know, that's really smart because I was used to this idea of what we learn in class, I just have to review and we're done. And when we're coming in the next class, I would soak in the information, review and we're done. And just like that. But he had this system of studying ahead and that was the first time I was being exposed to such. And like, this is a very good idea. Now, once you soak yourself into these books, like I did taking up his method, I found that all these of uh, my father has these, these are the kids that wear the nicest clothes when it comes to culture day, these are the kids that hang out these when it comes to that, these are the kids that come with phones and hiding them under the table, but then we had Chinese phones. And you know, once that Chinese phone have this ringtone, this irritating ringtone that when you, you receive a message, it's like... Yeah, they have all these flashy gadgets, all these fancy things. Once you soak yourself and you tell yourself is, I'm not here for, for show. I am here for education. All those things stop bothering you and you stop minding them at all. And I soaked myself into books. Every single break time I would be in a tree, I would be studying. Because I wanted to be better. I wanted to be better than I was. Because every report card I was getting... My mom would say, what, what is wrong with you? What's going on? How come these are able to perform like this? They are also human beings. If they can do it, you can do it. So what's going on? And that's a mentality that I live by. This is where people get this attitude of saying, or this impression of saying, I am a very competitive person. Am I competitive? Yes. 
but I believe in the notion saying if someone can do it, I can do it. And I don't want to do it at the level at which they're doing it. I want to do it better. And if you place yourself in an environment where you are the best, you will never, you will never aim to exceed yourself because everybody is always praising you. Oh, you're so smart. Oh, you're so intelligent. Oh, you play better. Oh, you know better. You see, and you become big headed at that level. Not until you find someone who's at a higher level than you and then you have something to aim for and that's the type of friends i like to associate myself with i don't want people whom i'm at the same level with i always want to aspire to something i'm like wow so someone can actually play better than i can play or someone can actually study better than i can study and that was the mentality that i picked up in my secondary school years now coming to secondary school years of course my grades started going up and we wrote our final exams that was in 20 zero, 2011 2011 as a grade 9 we wrote our final exams and yes i did get above 500 this was after i had this friend who told me no no you can't get above 500 no one has ever gotten above 500 or he i'd never heard of anyone who had gotten above 500 and i actually told him i'm gonna be the first person you know who has ever gotten 500 and above and make sure that the type of circle that you have are not people that bring you down but support your goals because if i had listened to him say nobody has ever gotten above 500 i would be reducing myself to his level but i was like i'm gonna be the first person you've heard of i got 519 on my grade 9 results and i was actually fourth the whole school yeah fourth the whole school in class of 2011 that was mcm going into high school my parents decided to apply for me in david kaunda national technical high school by then it was a high school before they had introduced these grade eights and side note never take your grade eight and grade nine child to a boarding school you are indirectly destroying their lives their minds are not yet developed to comprehend the things that go on in a boarding school please parents please spare your children going to david kaunda national technical high school then which was later converted to secondary school when i was in grade 12 it was kind of a different experience and the irritating thing is this smart boy in my class philip he followed me there and I was like what the hell you already a bug when I was in secondary school and now I have to deal with you here and yes he did come out first in my secondary years he's good you can't die boy is a genius now going into high school high school was um, a different experience one first you have to comprehend the mental notion that there there's no adult supervision you are on your own and by then we were living in what you call a student owned school because most of the times that you only see the teachers is in class but when you're out of class students run everything from the sweeping duties activities and everything else from eating you go to the dining halls they are served by students then you go class time like prep is organized by students and then you'd go to duties like in the dorms sleeping time sweeping time who sweeps where who does what the duties and everything else that all run by students and then there's this hierarchical structure where you have monitors you need to respect your monitors your prefix you need to respect your prefix and there are those in-betweens called sub prefix and all that nonsense so it is easy for you to get lost in all this mess and people do get lost in this because people have the mentality of saying everyone from david kaunda is smart true but it's easy for you to lose your way and i can make a statement here that david kaunda national technical high school is the best school in the country. I know those people from Hillcrest, um, Palembe, and all these to my other other schools that we don't talk about. They're going to come up and say, no, no, our schools are better and such like and such like, but that's their opinion. <laughs> this right here is a fact. David Kaunda is the best school in the country. Going into David Kaunda National Technical High School, you would meet this another smart kid you'd call Tamandani. This was like the first shock we had written our first exams in the first, uh, what do you call it, is it a semester or a term? First term, and he practically stole away almost every single prize. It was an eye-opening experience, and in high school, I was a little bit of the laid-back section, because then you have to fend for yourself, 
then you need to attend the classes you can attend if you want if you don't want you can't attend it's like it's like you're living on your own that's how it is but the teachers are the best the students themselves like if you commit to the learning system that is in david kaunda national technical high school you will not regret it is the best education you can ever have we had these teachers who would literally go up to the chalkboard and would recite a whole textbook you had people like mr katete you had people like mr piri who taught us in chemistry you had teachers like mrs shonga who taught us in history these are like the best teachers you can ever have but even with the best teachers it has to do with the attitude that you're receiving the education that they're giving you no matter how good the system is as long as you don't give it a positive attitude it's just not going to work for you in all these education experiences that i've told you i've not mentioned uh, that i had a girlfriend so side note in high school my best friend was a girl yes I had a female best friend before I was dating. My best friend was a girl and she would always tell me about her problems. And I, looking at that, I wasn't ready to handle what relationship problems had to do with then. I considered them a distraction. And I said to myself is, I'm never gonna date or be in a relationship until I graduate or until I finish high school that was something that i stuck to i never dated from primary school secondary school and high school until i actually completed my ordinary level education now that aside so what did i get in my high school education so in my high school education i actually scored uh, seven points i could have done better and I wanted to do better, but then the subject that I loved the most kind of let me down. I got a two in physics and I got a two in GMD, which is geometrical and mechanical drawing. And it was my favorite subject. I was, I could, I could be considered the best, but then I just became too cocky and too big headed that I didn't actually practice cause it just came natural. I was the highest in secondary school in GMD and so I figured I would be the highest in high school, but it just didn't work out like I thought it would. Now, so I got seven points and I was hoping I could get big, I could get better. And the funny thing is in my school, David Kaunda National Technical High School, or in short DK is, they do not consider six points. They have three categories. First of all, are those students that get all straight ones. Then second part are those students that get six points. And that was in the third category of those students that got seven points. This is like the categories are gone. Then you have nine, 10 and such like. We graduated. I actually did um, A-levels. I hope my mom is not seeing this video though because I failed my A-levels. My A-levels was just me relaxing. I was playing, I didn't have the material, and it was just finally I'm done with high school, let me just, let me just relax. And our A-levels were doing Excel exams and such like and such like and were supposed to write them at Metapoly, Metapoly something, Metapolitan or Metapolitech, something, something, I don't even know what the name was, but all I know is that those exams were horrible and I failed and I hid the results from my parents and until they see this video, that's when they're going to realize that I actually didn't make it in those results. I actually hid them somewhere in the wardrobe, somewhere, somewhere there. That's where those results are. Just a bunch of fails. And then university. So if you've seen most of the content that I put out on my channel, university has been a challenge. Because when I applied for university, I decided to come to China. And the school that accepted me was Chongzhen University. Now, Chongzhen University, when you pronounce it, it's Tianjin Chongzhen Dashui. So when you just type Tianjin Dashui, it will give you a university which is different from the one that you are actually at. And then when I saw the reviews and the environment and the state, I was like, wow, this is a very good school. But not knowing that that Chongzhen part is very important because it's not the university I was looking up. 
but it was the university I was going to. So when we arrived in the university, I was a little bit late. And then when I had arrived, the first discussion that they had is the scholarship. Saying that the scholarship, the initial plan for the scholarship was supposed to be you get 80 and above and they give you a scholarship, which is just like tuition. They'll pay for your tuition, then you pay for your accommodation and such like. And I made that arrangement with my parents and they were like, oh, it's cool, you got this. Turns out when I came into China, the first thing that the students were discussing among themselves is there is no scholarship here. They actually want all of us to pay. And I've actually made videos about this. You can actually check them out. And I'm like, what do you mean we're supposed to pay? Like, what's going on? And they were like, no, we ju we're just from having a meeting. They say there's no such thing as scholarship. It's not about what you, the results that you get. It's just you're supposed to pay. And then the university is going to refund you the money if you pass the mark and all that confusion. Now, after we had resolved all this, they reached to a point of saying, okay, fine, we're going to be giving top 10% of the students in class. The initial was supposed to be 20%, but then it was reduced to 10% of the students in class. So meaning now you need to compete with people from Rwanda, people from Burundi, people from Congo, people from Tanzania, you people from uh, Pakistan, people from uh, Nepal, people from Bangladesh. That was the most scary thing you can ever experience. And my first year, up to the time that they said, okay, fine, we'll be giving 10% and it'll be based on your first year results, I was practically just sleeping and playing. And then the results had come out and they had given 20% according to the initial plan that they had made. So 10, 20%, that was like 20 students then because we were around 90 students then. So they'd given 20% and I was 11th in my class, which was good. I got in the scholarship. Now, this actually has to mean that it now has to go back to you studying. And a lot of people after the first year decided to drop out of school. I told my mom about the situation and she was like, that was me just coming into China. She was like, if that's the case, then I don't think I can manage. It's better you just come back home. Use the money that I've given you and just come back home. And I was like, okay, fine. You know what? It just requires us to study. I don't have a problem with studying, I got this. Just be paying my accommodation, pay my what, everything else, I got this. And I started opening books. Just study, study, study. Second year, second year was very easy for me. It was just all about books. I cut off playing, I cut off what, it was just about books. Cause then you know that once you don't have this scholarship, this tuition fee exemption, you're supposed to pay 20,000 yuan 20,000 yuan right now as I'm recording this video would amount up to something like 60 to 70,000 kwacha. That is the money that you're supposed to pay like if you don't get this scholarship. And the second time, second year, studied, study, study, I actually got the scholarship. Third year as well, study, 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 I actually did get the scholarship. And I did graduate from Chongzhen University getting all the scholarship from the 10%, which was like what? Sometimes the first year it was 20 students, the second year it was seven students, the third year it was also seven students, and I was among those seven students that was awarded this scholarship. Till I graduated with a GPA of 3.79. Now, Currently, I'm doing masters at Tianjin University, the same university I thought that I was coming at. And as I'm recording this video, I'm at a stage of, I wanna give up. I don't know if education is for me right now, you know? And all I'm doing right now is I'm looking at my past experiences with the things that I've gone through in my education history and saying this was the time that I wanted to give up and I didn't and I made it. In secondary school, this was the time that I wanted to give up and I didn't and I made it. High school, this was a time when I wanted to give up and I didn't and I still made it. And in my bachelor year, that was a time when I wanted to give up the most and I didn't and I made it. So I'm trying to gather all that strength and put it into this master's degree that I'm supposed to be writing right now or 
being part of right now and find the strength to finish it because uh, as of now <sighs> I'm in that giving up stage so a full recap would be in my primary school my grade 7 exams I got 800 and above and the best passing mark for most of the students is 800 and I got 806 in my grade 9 exams the best passing mark considered in my country is 500 and above and I got 519 and in my high school the best person mark considered by my countrymen is six points but i was one point short this is the only one that i failed to beat a milestone in university i could have done better i know i could have done better in so many levels but yeah I came out with a 3.7 was i the best student there so i was told I have no problem with studying it's just it's just interesting it's like you're learning new things it's like i don't know how you put this now i think i think i've shared my education experience now what do you learn from what do you learn from all of this one Society out there has put out this notion of saying you need to have a paper for you to make it Don't let them don't give them a reason to put you down in any way if you've been given any uh, If you've been given an opportunity of being in school, please utilize it as much as you can There are a lot of people who would wish to be in the position that you are there in and if you are in a stage in school where you're saying okay fine at this point I I don't think I can continue studying anymore. Take a break. Take a break. A day or two is okay. Just refresh. Remind yourself of the reason why you are in that university in the same place. Just refresh, rejuvenate your mind. It's okay to feel like you want to give up. It's normal. It happens to everybody. We just don't talk about it. It's normal if you want to give up at any point. It's normal. Even if you're frustrated, it's just normal when things are not working out, it's normal. Take your time. Remind yourself of why you are in school in the first place. And then pick up from there. Just don't force yourself when you're in the point of giving up. You just keep forcing and forcing and forcing yourself. This is where people end up being depressed. So take your time. Mental health is very, very important, especially when it comes to the education system is very very important make sure you're in the right mental space and yeah do your best don't settle for less do your best if i can do it you can do it and you can do better i do expect you to do better like if you've seen this video i definitely do expect you to do better now a shout out to the people that I'll be expecting to make a similar video. Uh, the first person is going to be Man From Pink. This guy is awesome. And I really do hope he's going to watch this video and head Man From Pink. I'm waiting for your video. The second one is going to be Tuganigwa Mwakagile. If you say that very fast, you might end up biting your tongue. Tuganigwa Mwakagile. That person is going to be Tori. Hmm. I don't know her full name. I just know she's story. The other person is gonna be Pretty M Kombe. I don't know if she's gonna see this video at any point or at what, but if she does see it, we are expecting to see your education experience. And then the last person is going to be Mylas. I've not seen a lot of posts on a YouTube channel of late, but if you do see this video, we are waiting. So five people. Man from Pink, Tuganigwe, then you have Pretty M Kombe, Tori, and you have Miles. I think we've come at the end of the video. Now, today's useless but important item in regards to studying is going to be this study table. So, usually this study table helps you when you don't want to get out of bed. And it comes with a cup holder and there's usually a charging socket here. I'd tried, I'd spent some hours looking for it, but I couldn't find it. There's a charging socket here, which has like five USB 
ports with a USB cable that you can connect to an adapter, then you can charge your phone, you can do what, you can put your tablet or your phone in here. And yeah, just for those people like studying in bed. I think we've come to the end of the video. This is gonna be a very long video. And I hope to see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment down below. Peace.